There are hundreds of people that had initially applied at the start in the U.S. Cyber Open that competed. Top 60 of those ended up making it to the U.S. Cyber Combine, where we had some intensive training over six to eight weeks uh, with our coaches and with the other team members. And of course, after that, the top 20 were selected for the team. So when I first found out that I was going to Greece, I was kind of just like sitting on one of the buildings on campus with Josh next to me. We we're just watching the stream, sitting through all the presenters and stuff. And when they like, I was the first of the Dakota State people to get their name announced. And I was just absolutely ecstatic that like, I was in the first wave of people that they called out their names and it was super exciting. The thought came to me right before I left for Greece. I'm like, okay, it's time to go. I'm actually leaving the country first time since I was like seven. I need to be prepared for what's going to happen. We got to get on this and try our hardest. Two or three vulnerabilities and the other two are the same thing. It was just a relief to see I and Austin and Logan had made it onto the team. It's just undescribable, the, the feeling that uh, that brings on. I think we can start in five, four, three, two, in the middle of competition, your goal is to just like focus on the challenge as hard as you can. Sometimes you're distracted by where you are on the leaderboard, but when it really gets down to it, you have to just look at your challenge and ask other people for help, learn as much as you can, and just like get the challenge done so that way you can move on to the next one and keep working your way up. Yeah, nice work. So a lot of it is looking through really minuscule data and then trying to manipulate that data in, into a, something that's useful to us or something that's human readable. You know, you're, you're working with a lot of things that look like gibberish often. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I can't figure out what These are complex problems that rightfully should take days, maybe weeks to solve, and then you can press a nine hour window where they have to solve it. They either get all the points or zero points for the problem. <laughs> There is no best effort. There is no I tried hard enough. They either solve it or they don't. Four bites. The inner team communication is, is really something that's interesting. A lot of the times you're not having full conversations. You're kind of dropping in for a bit and uh, talking about some minor aspect quick and then hopping out and going back to work. At the end of the day, that makes uh, things real interesting within the team and, and making that effective is a challenge. A lot of times it's more of, will this work? Well, let's try it. Nope, didn't. Now what? Okay, this will work. Nope, okay. again. Now I'll look into this. Thank you, that's a good lead. Thinking you made some progress and then you didn't actually make progress and then you, you finally make progress and eventually that leads to a big win, you completing that challenge, that problem. You're on, on a high thrill of it and you realize, all right, time to get back to the competition. We still need we need to win. We still have more points to earn. All right, there's plenty more crypto. There's <laughs> plenty, yeah, more, plenty yeah. more crypto hey, to do. Gonna... Being a part of that again, I can't, I can't express how special this is. For everyone on the team, I'll, I'll speak for them and say, this is a really unique experience. This is one of those things that you'll look back and you'll tell your grandkids about. You know, when I was 22 years old and I flew by myself to Greece to beat the best in the world, and you're gonna share those photos for generations. Red vs. Blue is a head-to-head -head competition where the teams are actually facing against each other live. They'll be attacking each other, they're defending their machines, as opposed to capture the flags where they're just working as a team to keep going and solve the challenges. They're actually solving challenges against other teams and their job is to hack into the team's website and get the flags that are stored over time. For the red versus blue, it's kind of like, uh, are, are we being attacked? Find something, stop something. Get curving in the right hand. Maybe yeah. you can get another point off. Maybe we can stop someone else from getting some points. Bring the service back up. And what I really love about the USR Games team, which is like 20 some people that are super into competitions, are super dedicated to their craft. And it's just like this awesome community where we can continually learn from each other. Great friends to have, and it's great people you can follow in the field and work with throughout the rest of your life, basically. My teammates are some of the coolest people I've met. Their enthusiasm comes through even in the virtual space. So to be here in person with them has been fantastic. But we've also got a lot of other people that have come and stepped up building different tools and aspects that have really supported the competition. And of course, those who then operate and run those tools to help support us throughout the competition as we solve challenges, as we patch services, and as we attack other teams. I mean, without Dakota State University, there's, there's no telling where I'd be. Uh, I do know that Dakota State University has provided me with tools and skill set to be here in the international competition with the U.S. cyber team. And I have no doubts that that's going to continue throughout the years as this program continues.
I wanted to be a part of that. I always wanted the chance to just go to DSU and do what the cool things that the current students were doing. It's super exciting to me that I can continue on that legacy of Dakota State and it's just super awesome to be, be a part of that. I think Dakota State set me up really great for the opportunity I had here. Dakota State University gave me like the stepping stones for where I can succeed. Maybe Dakota State University should be higher up on people's maps. We're pretty good at what we're doing.